Hello everyone, I am that 3D guy and before starting this video, I would request you to please subscribe to this channel and press the bell notification icon so that you do not miss any future videos. Also, I would request you to share this video with anyone you feel is uh, doing alias or maybe learning something new in 3D. It might be very useful for them. So, let's talk about what we are going to do today. As you might have seen in the thumbnail, we'll be creating uh, a surface from three curves, right? And it is often like uh, whenever you are modeling, uh, you are always given a tolerance of around 1 mm or something uh, till you get the design intent correct, right? The main thing in uh, design or modeling is that you should get the uh, design intent correctly, right? If you have that, then uh, it's probably good to go. But if you don't have that, then no matter how your reflections are, no matter how everything is, it won't matter because it does not solve the design intent. Now, when we have three curves over here, and it is very precise to be honest, you are not given, I don't think uh, there is something where it is defined that, okay, you need to work in just these limits. Here and there a bit is okay. You always try to find some trimmed edges uh, along the way as well, right? But over here, just in case, uh, where there is the, where it's like the rarest of the rare cases where you are asked, okay, you need to work inside this boundary and you are just given these three curves inside which you want to put those surfaces in, right? With probably good reflections. So we'll uh, discuss how we do that today. It's also a very good exercise for those who are starting out with automotive modeling. So this is one of those exercises which can be maybe used to model something like a back of a Porsche or something, right? Not as precisely as what I'm going to show over here since you still uh, get to work with three or uh, four surfaces over here. As you can see at the back over here, the rear fender, you can clearly see how uh, it is kind of having the same shape like in this, right? So it's, just, it's something like that. Also, if we can see over here, it's the same over here as well. This is also the similar, it's a similar path to it. Not a very uh, straight one, but it's kind of similar. So yeah. So here we have the three curves. Now I'll be showing you two different ways. One will be the very quick way of doing it. One will be a, like a uh, concept modeling or a cast modeling kind of a stage, right? Uh, maybe the one will be the sketch modeling where uh, the designer comes up to you and tells you, okay, I want something done very quickly. Uh, just in two seconds, maybe like create a surface, give it to me and I'll just see how it works, right? He's just sitting next to you. The second will be where you are giving given time. You are trying to get good reflections and all as well. Getting, trying to get good patch layout. There's a difference between sketch modeler and a cast modeler as well. Sometimes one person does both the things. So that's the thing. But the main thing is just to lay off the surfaces, which is very important when you start off with the uh, automotive modeling. You are not wrong until uh, the final stage, right? You can keep redoing the things again and again. That's the beauty of uh, any 3D software you can work on. So let's start with some of the major tools we are going to use over here. So the first thing which we are going to use is the detach tool, right? So as you can see, we have one degree curve over here. We have a two degree curve over here. We'll use, a, we'll use one of my favorite tools that is known as detach. Right, and it's there in palette, object edit, attach, and you just hold attach and you'll find detach over here. So what it does is, it detaches, if you hold alt, it's snap, going to snap at the center of the curve. If you hold, uh, if you just uh, move your left mouse button, it's going to uh, slide it across the uh, curve. And if you press control, it's going to snap at one of the uh, end points, right? So that that's how it works. Now, as you can see, uh, I have just a small window over here, which as soon as I do any uh, command, I give any command, it just shows over here. So it's very easy for you to track as well. So, yeah. So I'll show you how this works. I'll take the detach tool, I'll hold alt and press it on the curve, right? I'll hold alt. And as you can see, even if I'm holding alt, it snaps directly into it. So it's just snapping at the end point, but it snaps in the center if you hold alt as well. So you hold alt and you snap at the center of the curve and you press space bar. And as you can see, we have two curves now. So it has detached the curve from the center. Now this is a two degree curve, right? We'll detach this from the center and see what happens. So we have the detached tool again. We snap it at the center, detach tool, and we get two two degree curves. And the one important thing to be kept in mind is that always whenever you detach your surfaces are always going to be in G2. Now, uh, what I mean by this, I have a surface it's not a very good surface, not at all, right? So, but there's one interesting thing about this. The reflections kind of are okay how I, how I would want it to be. 
not the best ones you see the jagged lines and stuff like that it's not the best one but yeah okay works the cvs are completely out of the uh, world so we'll just try to use the detach tool over here and see what happens obviously it doesn't do much but these are some of the tricks when you are modeling something quickly these, these things work you have a very big surface the uh, cvs are way too much you want okay i'll just split it into two maybe you use the detach tool obviously it is not always recommended to split your surfaces into small pieces unless you are at the final stage and you feel okay i'm now okay i'll just make different parts for this maybe there's a, a parting at the fillet over there so you think okay i'll use one parting line at the center of the surface which is very big and then try to align the uh, fillet to that uh, to that point so something like that so i just snap it similarly to how i snapped it on the curve i press space bar and as you can see our cvs are not the best but you can still work with it it's easier to understand now and if you see the surface was completely bad but still we have g2 continuity over here which is a good thing plus i think it it just tries to minimize the amount of uh, exaggeration that has right you, you could see how much it was exa being exaggerated now we can easily move and we know okay how much cv we need to move again it's going to destroy the curvature and everything so if you know what you are doing it's the best tool but if you don't then it might also be the worst one because i recommend using big surfaces and trying to control their cvs alone right so this is a uh, detached tool so yeah it's very useful in uh, a lot of cases in some cases it's like okay it works but it doesn't solve the purpose that's the thing now we have three curves over here the first uh, one is the sketch model right three curves over here i'll switch on the cvs you see over here we have three curves over here we just bring this one a little bit ahead uh, or it's okay yeah we keep it like this even though i think it would have been better if you would have okay we do it right now just a little bit over here and this one as well we just drag it a little bit over here right so okay yeah so as you can see we have three curves over here and it would be very difficult for us to fill something in like this right the transport designer or the product designer comes up to you tells you okay i want something like this maybe you can move it a bit over here over here and now i want you to make a surface in it quickly so how are you going to do that right it's it's just like a sketch model so you just take a detach tool over here and object edit again the tool which i showed you previously you hold alt at one of the edges uh one of the curves so there's one thing that needs to be kept in mind if you have snap divisions on right if you have snap divisions on it's over here snap division center to over here so we have uh, detach again we'll hold control and alt and we see it's snapping somewhere over here but if you hold alt there's a point which is ahead these are what the absolute and the arc length of the curve is right now we don't need to care about this a lot because this is quite within the a range of, of most of the time so we don't need to care that much we we'll just use alt and we we'll just go ahead with it for now we'll get into the details more but it's like you just need to select whichever point you want one is the absolute one which is like the actual length one is the arc length because it is moving right so it's going to show you the length of the arc how much the distance it's from the arc so it changes along the arc as well so you need to decide where you want uh, where you are feeling more comfortable or you can just choose that one Uh, most probably when using detach you use alt and just snap it on so it's like this then you use square i use square over here 1 2 3 and 4 we have square over here g0 position everywhere we'll see how much cvs we are able to maintain right 1 2 3 yeah we are able to keep something like this the cv layout uh, cv layout is hideous it's not even uh, that good but yeah it gets the job done it gets the job done you get kind of okay reflections to work around you get something which is like okay or you can work around maybe if you go in the top view or oh, we just hide this thing and go in the top view yeah it's kind of okay it's not the uh, worst thing but the cv layout is like one of the worst ones i have ever seen so yeah because the main reason is because as you can see the cvs are merging towards over here as you can see it has four points over here it has four points over here but as soon as it comes over here it has four points over here and four points over here one is one point is meeting over here so in if we actually want it to succeed we'll have to move it somewhere over here which is obviously not recommended like this right so it's going to be something like this and the cv layout is going to be worse so obviously it serves the purpose purpose it gives you the design intent that's what we want we'll go ahead with it we'll keep it to 3 by 3 3 for 3 by 3 for now the best thing about this is you can even work with history in this right 
he tells you okay maybe change the design intent a bit over here or maybe over here and you still have control over the curve right just you still have control over the curve which is pretty good which is pretty good when people are hiring modelers they actually see this that how efficiently you are able to work right you can actually see how fast i'm able to move these curves and because of the history i'm able to control all these things where i'm able to uh, use the surfaces as well right so this is how it works yeah so we are somewhere over here okay now this is the first step now we want something a bit more cleaner right obviously not class a i won't be uh, giving the term class a since i don't think it is uh, logical for me because class a i would say only is meant for companies which are uh, like if you are working for a company and it's a production model or if you are working on a scan model and working inside the tolerances or something like that so i would suggest that uh, maybe and the reflection need to be perfect right and every company has its own uh, like kind of criteria where they suggest you okay this is the tolerance we want to work on this is something that we work on so all those things you need to keep in mind now this is just a cast model where i uh, just a cast method where you i would uh, suggest you that okay maybe you can try some this kind of a patch layout might not work out in class a but something like this would work out in for maybe concept model right so yeah what we can do is um that's like the another stage after the sketch model after 10 iterations are done you go on to the one iteration single iteration or a couple of iterations which you want to make a model of then you work around like this now we have a tool called uh we just see uh okay so what we'll do is we'll take this curve now now there's one interesting thing over here we have something which is like this right we have something like this and it all the points are going to converge no matter what since it's a kind of a triangular shape right it's not a square so what we need to do is we need to convert it into two squares now how can you think of it as a uh, as two squares that's the main question right so what i would do is one uh maybe something like this or this and something like this and this so yeah something like this where you can clearly see now you have four portions over here one two three Oh, sorry three portions over here with uh, squares right one two and three with squares which is a good thing now we know okay how we are going to divide it right we have something in mind okay we are going to do something like this so that's what we want to do now what we'll do is there's a method to it maybe uh, it would be better if you can follow it alongside we select the curve move pivot over here control c control v try to move it as Oh, uh, we just move the pivot over here again. Maybe it moved, yeah, and somewhere over here, yeah. We'll keep it on the we'll keep it on the top over here, yeah, somewhere over here. We'll go on the top view. Now we need to shrink it so that the nature of the curve remains the same because this curve is kind of similar to what we are going to have at the top, right? Because we want to have some kind of a reflection which is like similar at the top. So what we'll use is this is a new tool which is oh. Uh, new tool for you obviously we'll go into curve edit since we are editing the curve we'll go into the curve edit right we'll go uh, over here in curve edit and we'll go into xf curve right it's over here and click over here click on the curve we go into rotate and scale since we have to rotate it a bit or scale so maybe i would also suggest using uh, maybe i would suggest using scale itself but yeah that's that's the thing So yeah, we can scale it like this, uh, rotate and scale it like this, and move it across over here, right? We'll try to keep it as close as uh, close it is to the thing over here. So something like this, yeah, close enough. We we'll try to keep this tangent as well, as close as possible, right? Yeah. So we have something like this, which is quite. tangential if you if you may uh, ask me so i'll just try to keep it maybe a bit more maybe i'll just play around yeah now we have got something which is tangent right something like uh, we we'll just move it this one as well yeah something like this a bit of a uh, cv movement here and there is pretty good as well we we'll just now as you can see we have a square over here one if you can see my screen one two three and four right We we'll use square one, two, three, and four. Now we have a square. The best part is we have a pretty good CV layout, which is pretty good. Yeah. So we we'll just keep it by three by three, and it works. We'll see the reflections. 
not that bad. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe I think there could have been something which could have been a much better solution. But yeah, for now, I think this, this looks pretty good. Kind of similar to the first one as well. Yeah. But in the terms of CV layout and the uh, term of patch layout, this would be a much better solution for you to go as well. Right. As you can see, it is bending quite a lot over here. This thing is not over uh, here as well. So I think it's a good thing to be done. Obviously, there's a there's a surface which is twisting over here, but it's quite less than what we have over here. So which is a good thing, obviously. Now we need to fill this part again. You might be asking, OK, we made a square till here. Now, how are we going to make something which is like uh, different, right? How are we going to make something close this path? Now, again, it's going to come at this one single point where the, all the points are going to meet. Okay, so here is what the major thing is. And this is completely my technique, which I'm using. You can use your own techniques. So obviously, some might have a better technique than this. And you are, if you are, you can feel free to share it as well. So yeah. This is, this uh, technique is just for you to open your mind, right? It's just to open your mind since I told you that alias, one single tool in alias has different purposes. One single surface can be made in different ways. You can have your own way to create this surface, maybe much better than this, what I have created and maybe get along like share it as well. So yeah, we have something like this. Now we need to create a negative for this, right? We'll create a negative for this. So we'll create a negative for this using a uh, monorail, right? We we'll use a monorail. So we'll go into uh, object edit. I think it's an object edit or it's in, yeah, it's in surfaces and palette surfaces and rail. So we go into rail, we go into, uh, we go into double click into rail and you see over here generation curves and rail curves. I want one generation curve and one rail curve. Generation curve will be this, rail curve will be this. Or the other way around, I think generation should be this one. This, since it's the bigger one, we'll keep this one as the real one. Or, yeah, whichever, because it's, you just need to follow. Like, okay, this is the path it's going to follow, right? So that's what a rail curve and a generation curve does. It follows along the path, right? If you see over here, we get the path like this. If we see over this, we get the path like this. And according to me, what I would think of would be, to maybe make something like this, you can you can give it a try. You can give it a try. But this is what I, I would have done if I would have been in your place. So yeah. And now we don't want this much of a surface, right? We don't want this this big of a surface. What we'll do is we'll go into query edit history of this. We'll go into the history of this. We'll switch on curve segments. We'll switch on curve segments. Now you see there's a point edge point to where to what extent do we want to extend it? Right, so we just move the generation and the rail curve behind over here. And as you can see, we have something which is like a surface, which is like this, right? Pretty good. Now what we can do is now we can try to, since this is a bigger surface, we won't, uh, we won't touch this one. We won't touch this one. We'll keep this one intact. We'll try to play with the smaller one, right? We'll try to play with the smaller one since the bigger one has already been set and this is okay. This is a very small part. We we'll just try to align it. Object, object, align. We we'll just try to align it. Object, align. Uh, for you, it might be somewhere over here in object uh, edit. Yeah, it's in palette, object edit, align. So you go into align, double click on it. And this tab opens over here. Right. So we have something which is like G2 over here. And you can just, now you can see, okay, you have, you might be thinking, okay, maybe there might be a chance for like making it into G2, but how are we going to like align it? Where is the alignment thing, right? So as I told you, you can, it is very difficult to uh, for us to align it to a, uh, maybe a trimmed surface, right? But then this tool, like inside the align tool, there's a tool named alignment type, right? There's an alignment type, which is a subcategory of align, uh, align options. Alignment type from edge, you can go into project, right? And what it's going to do is it's going to project the surface on top of the other surface like this. It's going to snap it like this so that it maintains the curvature of it. It's also going to help you lose a lot of surface also, which is extending, right? That's the main point of it to just snap it along the best axis 
uh, or maybe mostly we do it normally uh, from the plane. So the best part is you can just snap it on and you get the Uh, you can just get the G2 curvature over there at that point and then you can trim the rest out. So that's what we are going to do here. We go into a line. We have this project G2. Okay. Yeah, something like this. We keep it into normal, right? We go into the vector options, keep it into normal because we want to project it normally. Because most of the time what happens is that the normal is like the closest point because it's like very, it's like at the perpendicular point sometimes, okay, if you know which point you're working on X, Y and Z axis, it's okay. But normal is like, okay, it snaps at a perpendicular distance, which is like the, I would say, I would say it's the closest one, right? Because it's like the 90 degree angle. So it's like the closest one. Every other angle is quite far from it. So that's the thing. You just take this uh, line over here and just snap it over here. You get G2 curvature, which is pretty good. You're happy with it. We then take this one. Obviously, we we'll lose the history with this. We'll align with this one. Luckily, our surface is big. So we are getting G2 on both the sides, which is a good thing. Now, we'll just trim the rest off. So we want to trim, get rid of this surface since it has not been completely filled by itself, right? There's also one thing which I can see is there might be a little deviation, which is not particularly a deviation. So it's okay. It's okay. So I think this surface is pretty good. You just trim this out, delete the locators. Now we have something like this, which looks uh, much better as a patch layout, right? As a reflection, you might be thinking, okay, maybe there might be a bit of a mess over here. But luckily we have got that right as well. You need to sometimes play around with this, this part, right? You need to play around with this part. Oops, my, I think I need to just move this one. Okay, yeah, here we go. So this part, and if you know how to work around with this, you just play, right? You just play. Some people find it very difficult to do this challenge, but yeah, it's, it's quite, uh, to be honest, it's quite simple. If you know the technique, just need to get rid of this part, just square this part off, take this part up, project align this one to this surface, get rid of the extra surface over here in this part. The thing, what I was talking about was now, if you want, obviously we won't be deta detaching it, but just for you to show, I want, I want to show it to you maybe. Maybe I can just detach it over here from here and I'll just, okay, I'm going to lose my history. Do I want to do this? No, I'll just duplicate this surface and show it to you. So what I had in mind when I showed you the four surfaces, right? One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. The three surfaces, which will form a, a four, four sided uh, square on each side, right? A four sided uh, polygon on each side, right? So we are just gonna detach it from here over here and maybe somewhere over here. this is just for the representation purpose we are still happy with this surface i'm just showing you what i meant by uh making it into four different uh three different surfaces right so i'll just snap it over here here we have something like this as you can see this is what i meant right now we have four sided figures on all these sides luckily we didn't need one since we are able to create a square and patch it out right that's what we want now sometimes you might notice okay you might have uh, gotten a bad reflection or something which is quite normal because obviously this is a very small surface now you need to play with it sometimes as well alias is not going to do, do the job always luckily for me it did the job and i'm pretty happy with it but it's not going to do the job always so you need to play around with the cvs know which cv works the which movement work, works the best and yeah you're gonna get there eventually and I'm very sorry for the delay in the videos as well. Uh, it's a bit difficult for me to like keep track of my schedule since uh, it's quite hectic for me right now. And most probably I think after this week, uh, yeah, I, I'll be more regular, right? I'll be uploading uh, twice a week, which is a good thing. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. And I, ho I hope you like this video. I think it was quite informational as well uh, from my side. Since it's one of the most difficult things when every time you see this thing, you are like, okay, I need to deal with this thing again, but you are not, not never uh, close to that uh, thing again, right? So that's the thing. Uh, just, just, uh, this is the thing of it. And I hope you like the video. Also, uh, if you think you can share it with someone who uses alias and uh, maybe is interested in knowing more, you can ask them to subscribe my channel, share the, uh, share the page as well, YouTube page as well. Also, if you have any doubts regarding any 3D software, it's not only uh, Alias or not only any other uh, NURBS software, 
you can uh, mail me at uh, that 3d guy 23 at gmail.com uh, uh, com and i'll be glad to uh, help you out with any of the things i know about right or maybe you could share me about something i don't know about which is quite mutual so yeah that's 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 about it i hope you like the video and see you in the next one